Our Premier League insider, David Ornstein, always a pleasure to see you. I know you've got some uh, cutting-edge insight for us, as always, and starting with Leeds and a potential takeover this week. Yeah, that's right, Anna. Uh, this is obviously a very nervous time for Leeds United, and I think we'll sense that tonight at the stadium. They do have a bit of a cushion, of course, above the relegation zone and some winnable games coming up. But the cost of relegation would be massive for them. And that's why we're on tenterhooks here if we're interested in Leeds United. Uh, not only from a football perspective, but from a financial one as well. Now, Premier League football has really helped transform Leeds United's revenues. But if you take a look at their financial accounts, which have not long since been published, um, there is a realisation that they've kind of maxed out what they're able to raise and largely due to their stadium size and it needs some improvements. Andrea Radvazani, who's been leading this project as owner since 2017, has done fantastic things for the club, but he can't really take them on anymore on his own. And that's why the 49ers Enterprises come into play. It's a consortium largely backed by American finances and they've been building their stake in Leeds United since 2018. They are really part of the furniture now and there's a crucial point here in that I broke a story a while ago that they have an option to buy the club for in excess of £400 million in January 2024 but it's always been likely that that takeover would be completed early. I understand that that deal is essentially done, but it's contingent on Leeds being in the Premier League, retaining their status. And that's why it makes their status, their survival so important. They have big plans around the squad, the club and redeveloping the stadium. So this is a pivotal moment. Now, after the Crystal Palace defeat, rubbing salt in the wound, Leeds were kicked out essentially of the Premier League's summer series pre-season tournament that uh, that uh, uh, you reported before we came on air. Uh, and that caused internal disappointment. Also, a story I broke last week that FIFA have ordered Leeds to pay £24.5 million to their former player Jean-Kevin Augustin for breach of contract over a, a, a short and, and not a successful loan period uh, in 2020. So that was another blow. But Javi Gracia will hope to give them a high in these weeks ahead. This project by Andrea Radrizzani, Victor Orta, the sporting director, Angus Kinnear, the chief executive, has been largely successful. They will hope that that journey continues on a positive trajectory. OK, well, if there wasn't enough pressure on Grazia's uh, shoulders, then this is certainly another layer to the story, David. And uh, looking at really, I suppose you could call it one of the Cinderella stories of the season, Villa, and under the management of Unai Emery, going from 16th to 6th in the table, it's been just a remarkable turnaround. How has he done it? This is an absolutely incredible story because when Unai Emery took over at Villa after Steven Gerrard, they were staring at relegation. They are now contesting, potentially, Champions League qualification. And if you look at their fixtures coming up, they play the likes of Brentford, Fulham and Wolves also on the horizon. It could get even better. Now, this owes everything to the amazing impact that Unai Emery has made on and off the pitch. And when you speak to people around the club like I do, they point immediately to his experience, of course, managing very successfully Sevilla. You know, he won European trophies there. Valencia took Arsenal to the Europa League final. He managed PSG as well. So this is somebody from the top tier of football management. They talk about his quality. They talk about his work ethic. He does not stop night and day. He is an absolute Trojan when it comes to that his diligence, his attention to detail. And you hear stories of how Villa now hold more meetings than ever before because Emery really wants to drill home the style of play, the, the manner in which he wants his teams to operate, to get to know his players better, to develop them. They're spending more time in hotels in order for him to conduct those meetings. He's built a really good rapport with the supporters as well. And when he was appointed... Um, the owners at Villa, Nasef Sawiris and Wes Edens, but in particular Sawiris, went out of their way to bring him to Villa Park and to give him a blank sheet of paper to really lead this project forward because really it was the biggest appointment Villa have ever made managerially 
in their history. And what's happening now is only going to enhance that power and authority when it comes to developing the squad, the staff around him, and also crucial decisions in the upcoming transfer market. Because, of course, Villa have big ambitions to kick on even further. Credit goes to those owners they took over in 2018 with Villa facing bankruptcy in the second tier, to the chief executive Christian Perslow overseeing it all, to Johan Langer, the sporting director, who some have criticised, but since he arrived when they survived relegation in 2020, he has really taken them on an upward trajectory as well. And it's not just on the pitch to, uh, alone. They have massive plans to redevelop Villa Park. They are one of the selected stadiums for the 2028 Euros if Britain and the Republic of Ireland win that bid. But underpinning it all at the moment is Unai Emery. He's doing a phenomenal job. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.